in uh, 2010, 11, I was planning an exhibition at the American Museum of Natural History called Beyond Planet Earth. Where are we going to go in the next 50 years? Where is humanity going to go? Well, we haven't succeeded in answering what, to me anyway, is one of the most pressing, if not the most pressing question in all of extraterrestrial science. Is there life somewhere else? If you're drilling down and you're doing that awesome geology as you go down, you may as well answer the biggest question of all, is there life there? The middle of nowhere in California is something like Mars. Uh, we've got a gypsum mine here, which is a pretty good proxy for some of the rocks on Mars, the softer rocks that were left behind. Now we actually see there's salty water running on the surface of Mars, but nobody really knows where the water is distributed, how deep it's distributed, or how much there is, and that's one of the things we want to find out. The exploration that we've been doing uh, on Mars has been just the top few inches. There's lots and lots of life on Earth where there's no sunlight. We, you know, we often think the sun is being the source of all life on Earth, and that's just not true. There's no reason the same can't be true on Mars. If we don't need astronauts to do it, then we can get there in the next 10, 15, 20 years, put a drill on the surface of Mars, drill down to the water, and see if there's any bacteria, viruses, protists, or even fish down in the water underneath the Martian surface. Over 20 years, we've been developing uh, drill systems uh, that can achieve this kind of um, depths and what you see today is a, is a culmination of, a, of four years in developing deep drilling technologies for Mars, for Europa, Enceladus, and other bodies. The requirements for the instruments, for the grinders, drills, and so on, came from uh, scientists. And we convert them into engineering requirements and then build actual hardware. We took technology that already exists we repackaged it and uh, for the first time showing that drilling deep on another planetary body is actually feasible. So if we can get a microscope down to the water underneath the Martian surface and examine with one or two micron resolution, and that's the same as the microscopes we have on board the drill here, we're either going to see life or we're not. We have a microscope uh, that takes uh, pictures with a half a micron resolution per pixel and we had to develop our own microscope because there aren't many microscopes that can fit into a two-inch diameter probe. The microscope looks with a, a white LED light and also with a two deep UV wavelengths to look for fluorescence, either a biological or abiological fluorescence. At the same time, we capture a sample every around 10 centimeters into Ziploc bags so all the mechanisms, all the actuators, all the electronics was packaged inside a slim tube that ends in a drill bit that's barely bigger than the tube itself. So now the depth, ultimate depth that this drill can penetrate is only limited by the length of the wire. The drill on average required somewhere around 100 to 200 watts which is in a power budget of radioisotope thermal generator that's on a Curiosity rover right now. The drill itself uh, weighs around 20 kilograms with additional instruments, another 10, uh, you know, 15 kilograms. So we're right in a budget of a mass budget of a current uh, rover on, uh, on Mars. This drill has been very successful and it was noticed by, by NASA. We had to do a lot of thinking about how to put the instrumentation on board and there were some trials and errors and, and they just went back to the drawing board until they got that compact set of microscopes on board. The last thing in the world we want to do is bring terrestrial microbes to Mars, drill down into the water table and contaminate the water on Mars with terrestrial microbes. So we're going to have to think about some combination of heat and vacuum and radiation that doesn't destroy all of our electronics and yet allows us to send down probes and microscopes that are utterly sterile. I've already learned that we need to have some mobility. The drill cannot be just a one-trick pony so that if we have an initial failure, the whole experiment isn't off. Once you get down to liquid water underneath the Martian surface, 
you're going to be able to answer pretty definitively, is there life somewhere else in the universe?